Hi friends, welcome to another Sephora sales event recommendations video. If it's your first time encountering any of these videos and you don't know what Sephora is, Google. Sephora runs a reward system with several tiers, Rouge being the highest depending on your spending threshold throughout the year, and Rouge gets first access starting on the 27th of this month and it runs through November 6th. VIB is granted 15% off that begins on the 31st as well as Insider 10% off on the 31st also running through November 6th, and all get access to the Sephora collection discount, which is a whopping 30% that begins on October 27th, the same date as Rouge, and also runs through November 6th. A couple of notes, this list will be edited as I would like to highlight the most recent new products that I acquired and I feel that are most relevant to the sale. Secondly, if you don't know, I stopped using skincare mornings and evenings back in July and I haven't started started up again since. Therefore, I eliminated an entire category from my shopping list. And I feel typically people rely on the Sephora sale for higher ticketed items like the more expensive skincare, fragrance, and luxury beauty all around, where the mid-tier priced items may be 15% off, not that great, 20% off meh. Which leads me to my third point, where consumers decide whether they will shop the Sephora sale or wait for the brand sale. Frankly, the Sephora reward system is not that great. I feel Ulta is better because they don't have a tier system where you will have to spend a certain amount throughout the year to be eligible for these different perks. No, at Ulta, you accumulate your points every time you buy something and you hold on to those points until it adds up to a whopping discount, which can be applied to a high price item, which is why I feel people shop Ulta mostly for the reward system. Again, because I think it's far better than Sephora's. With the actual discount, there are brand sites that offer a higher amount than 20%. And again, for Rouge and Sephora, you will have to spend a certain amount throughout the year to be eligible for that 20%, whereas the brand discount is open to all consumers. However, because Sephora is huge, global. I'm not sure the details with how it works, but the shipping conditions are far better because they're able, I think, to cover the cost where they live in a region that Sephora can still ship to, whereas the smaller brand sites, although they have the better discount, consumers might end up paying the same anyway with the shipping costs, right? So these are all considerations to make, whether, yes, you're in Rouge and you only use 20% for the higher ticketed items and you wait for the brand sales, for the 25, 30, or even 40% specials because you are domestic and shipping isn't a problem for you. But if you're international and Sephora does have the best shipping options for you, even though you're only getting 15% off, it still means something. So those are the different considerations to weigh out, which will help you determine whether you think it's worth participating in the Sephora sales event, or you rather wait for a brand site event, which they're gonna come on hot and fast, because even though we are at the end of October, my favorite month, the Black Friday sales, promotions, and events will start rolling in early November. Even though Black Friday finds itself on the calendar later in November, from my memory, if it serves me well, last year I felt I started to receive Black Friday emails way ahead of the Black Friday date after Thanksgiving. So just have a heads up for that. And perhaps many of you already have these brand sales on your calendar. You know when they're gonna drop, when they're gonna start. You already have your list ready. You're not even looking at Sephora and you're already racking up Ulta Beauty points for those products that have been on your radar for months and now you're gonna get a whopping discount taken off the total, I hear you friend, you are well prepared. I thought why not, let me film another Sephora recommendations video because they're fun. I love to talk about makeup, we get to hang out, you know what I mean? And again, this list is pretty edited because I wanted to keep it to the items that I have been loving in the last few months and that of course 
are available at Sephora. So I wanted to begin with complexion. And on my face, I have a mixture of the House Lab Skin Tech and the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. The House Labs I have in 330 Medium Cool and the Hourglass in shade 11. I have been using these foundations nonstop. Let me start with the House Labs. I think it comes in clutch now, especially because I am not using skincare, that the skincare ingredients or perspective that House Labs likes to take with their makeup, with Lady Gaga suffering from fibromyalgia and including acacia, no, our which is the molly compound is an anti-inflammatory ingredient that is put in the cosmetics and i know well that a lot of these skincare benefits properties in makeup are not going to have the same potency as an actual skincare product that's why i still apply moisturizer before my foundation application nevertheless the reason or why the house labs has been a favorite to me all this time is the impeccable skin shade match in terms of having that golden but olive undertone and not it appearing too green on me providing the right amount of warmth and in the texture department is a pleasure to apply it has a a skin-like quality about it in terms of the formula it goes on easy it has a silky texture very smooth on the skin and because we are in the autumn winter season and this might have been a little more dewy and finish in the summer season now it finds a perfect seat at the natural part of the spectrum in terms of dry down for me and when it comes to the hourglass foundation that definitely leans a little more soft matte and more neutral so in terms of skin match i do prefer the house labs because it has a little more warmth without it appearing orange whereas the hourglass i like the shade overall and i do like that is a little more neutral because i always thought myself to be golden in undertone but i am clearly not and that's that's okay because the hourglass in shade 11 i think is a great skin shade match for me and the cheek products i apply thereafter balances everything out so i have best of both worlds i have the more natural finish from the house labs i have a little more soft matte finish from the hourglass and funny enough i'll go into more detail when i film my skin sobering video not using skincare and applying these toners essences serums and moisturizers and whatnot i think affects in a positive way the longevity of my foundation. The makeup just won't break down as quickly because the skin surface is not as emollient and tacky, where when I apply my moisturizer, yes, I am providing a little more zhuzh, if you will, to the foundation's application, but because I'm already starting from a much drier standpoint, everything looks more soft matte, it doesn't look as dewy and overly shiny on my skin, which is something I found to appreciate during this journey. So these are the foundations that I still recommend. I think I might have recommended these products in the last Sephora sales event that occurred in April, and I have been using this since. The newest addition, of course, is my Suku foundation that has been sent to me in PR, but this is obviously not available at Sephora, so we'll sticking to the House Labs and the hourglass which leads me to the concealers that i bought in last spring's sales savings event and that is both the lancome taunt idol and oops here we go yes the lancome but also the dior forever skin correct i have been using the lancome non-stop it was between this and the natasha denona high glam concealer which i have not yet purchased it has still been on my radar but one of those things where i still i like the lancome i love the color let's cover these shades shall we i have 350 medium cool for my under eye and i place medium neutral on my lid medium neutral also works well on my under eyes what stand out to me about the lancome is how smooth it is but while providing medium coverage it doesn't look dry under the eyes it doesn't appear cakey but it has a lovely fluidity where i feel it a, an appropriate texture to be applied under the eyes and the slightly brightening quality from 350 with that peachy undertone i think just provides 
great correction while also providing that brightness under the eyes to even out the rest of my face. As for the Dior, this is in shade 4N. I primarily use this as a one and done product if I didn't want to apply foundation and I use the Forever Correct to spot treat portions of my face that were too red, too uneven, and the Dior had more of like a, a creamy quality about it as opposed to the Tante Idol. So I relied on the Tante Idol from Lancome for my under eye correction and concealing and the Dior Forever for the rest of my face. But believe it or not, my blemishes and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation has been healing quickly ever since I stopped using skincare. I think because the moisturizers and whatnot that I was applying every morning and evening was interfering with the skin's natural process of turnover. Those products can slow down the process despite what we've been told that said uh, acids and whatnot accelerate it. It actually is like interfering with the skin's natural mechanism that's already in place to turn over its own dead skin. And even blemishes that I self-inflict on myself, I found to heal rather quickly, even more so before when I was using skincare. And because of that, the coverage provided by the house labs and the hourglass, for instance, gives me enough coverage for these lighter blemishes or these marks that are still left behind where I don't feel it necessary to use the Dior for more correction. And my gripe with the Dior concealer is the fact that it's only given me six months and I purchased this or started using it back in April of this year. I'm past the date, I'm past the date. It doesn't smell though. It has that fragrance, which I cannot stand. I still might use it out of spite because I barely made a dent in this freaking concealer and I feel like I need to use it. So maybe I'll start using this all over my face instead of the foundation and give that a break. Stay tuned. Brows, what can I say? Benefit Goof Proof 3.5 has been my go-to now for the last few years. I know there are pomades powders, different techniques to apply brows and shape them. The pencil for me, this one specifically, the wedge, has been the one to work out for me the best. Ease of use, consistency, the color, and the brow product line from Benefit was developed by Danessa Myricks. She nailed the color science for the brow products, and 3.5 it just cannot get any better in terms of the color match with my hair. I used to do five. Five, retrospectively, especially when I see old footage or old videos using that pencil, way too dark red. It just did not, it was too bold on my face. And 3.5 is like the perfect everyday soft dark brown color that's neutral in undertone. It has a little, little red in there, but not so much that it appears contrasting on my skin. And again, texture of the pencil is not too dry, but not too creamy either. It adds shape to the brows, is easy to apply on the skin. I could go on and on and on. You know how I feel about the Goof Proof pencil, and I am well aware that when Benefit runs a brand sale, they do 30% site-wide, and because I'm domestic, I might partake in that sale. One just passed. I feel they'll run another one for Black Friday, and that means it's time for me to pick up a few because this is my last one. Am I correct? I think this is my last one. I have, I might have a backup, but I'm just gonna get like three more, <laughs> especially if they're 30% off. Off to the cheek products. Today I applied my Hourglass palette that I did purchase from the Hourglass site. This is the custom compact select, my beloved barn owl, but inside we have palette number three, if you buy as is, will be found in the snake palette. This by far has been my go-to cheek products for the last few months. I think I purchased this in September, I can't recall, but I feel like I've been using it forever. The bronzer color, the cheek color, I just adore these peachy coral shades and the tone of the bronzer, and I know it's limited, I can only speak about my skin tone 100%. It works for me. It works for me where every time I slap these cheek products on, my complexion appears 
flawless. Due to the nature of the hourglass powders, they have this quality about them where blended on the skin, they leave behind this soft focus effect because again, with the whole ambient lighting technology, the powders are baked, they mimic different types of light as if the light is hitting your skin. That's what the powder is doing when applied. And that same technology is relied on to formulate the bronzer and cheek products in here. So you have that same soft focus blurred quality when applying these powders on your face. And again, I just adore how they look. I know they're not for everyone. Many of you had expressed your just not disappointment, but reality check of it all where your skin texture does not favor these types of powders because there is a bit of sheen to them. And if you do have large pores or textured skin, the hourglass powders very well could accentuate that, right? So what if that does happen, okay? And we're looking at different powder products, different cheek products. I gotta talk about the Gucci. These blushes are one of my most favorite blushes out of my entire collection. As opposed to the Hourglass, we're looking at a matte formula. The official name is Matte Luminous for a reason. Even though it's not shiny like the Hourglass and more matte in application, did you see the swatch? How smooth that was. And yes, that was 06 Warm Berry, my first Gucci blush. And what pulled me in and just locked the door and I happily stayed in the room. Everything from the texture to the color is magnificent, especially Wormberry, a shade I heavily rely on to create sculpt and flush, and that reddish wine tone, just impeccably perfect for autumn, even for winter, and might I add summer and spring, because that reddish quality about it you, depending on where you place it on your face will present a, a different sculpting look. If you wanted it to appear more flush, you apply it here on the center, more sculpted, higher on the cheekbones, very Vogue style. And also you can control the intensity. A brush that is fluffier will have a lighter application here. And then you could use a much denser brush to place more color into the hollows and create that gradient with the same color. You know what I'm saying? That is a power of Warm Berry. If you're wondering about the other shades I have, 08 Soft Red, this is the ultimate summertime shade. Are you kidding me? Just tossed on all over, over the nose to imbue like that pretty sunburnt effect. And the other I have 04 Bright Coral. I need a more dense brush to pick up a little more color from Bright Coral, but easy peasy to just pounce on the center of my face because it is a lighter color. I could get away with a more haphazard application, not so much if I was dealing with warm berry, but all these shades have been wonderful on my skin tone as well as my skin texture. Although matte, it does not look dry and crusty on the skin. The blend is beyond smooth and silky. It's, it just makes it foolproof. If you had a tough time applying blush, the Gucci blush will hold your hand with whatever brush you decide to use. Even if it's a, a whatever brush, you'll still get an amazing finish from these blushes just from the formula alone. And lastly, going into Danessa's skin blurring well, what's the official name? The Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Flushed. There we go. In Jubilee and Bellini. Jubilee, by far, my favorite out of the two. Bellini is more of a spring-like moment for me. It's very peachy on the skin. And I could do peachy in the winter, for sure. I think it really depends on the mood. But an all-season color, definitely Bellini for me. It has that terracotta finish to it, which you know how I feel about terracotta clays, okay, red browns. A shade that as I would apply Gucci soft red all over across the nose, I would do the same thing with Jubilee. Yeah, however, it does pack a punch, so you do have to tread carefully and pick up just enough product because look at that. Y y that's all you need, or you probably need less. And my apologies, I was trying to lead from the skin texture point when speaking about the hourglass. 
the skin blurring balm flush might be a formula to consider because it does have the upsolite technology here where it combats excess oil and sweat on the skin where your complexion won't look broken down. It looks touched up throughout the day where you wouldn't have to powder or do the blotting papers. The blush product itself will help your cheek area to look more poreless, if you will. Even though it's a balm, it still has more of a matte quality than the hourglass powders, right? So that's something for you to consider, especially if you live in a climate that's humid. The blurring balm, not only the flushed i also highly recommend the blurring balm which many of you when i bring that product up talk about the fact that you live in a humid climate and the danessa blurring balm is the only product that has saved your face in terms of it appearing smooth sweat and oil excess oil free throughout the day where you don't look like a grease ball but you look fresh and ready to go the blurring bomb. And again, I think people have expressed the same enthusiasm in regards to the blurring bomb flushed, right? Not only in regards to the formula, but the color selection is outrageously good. I think Danessa did an amazing job in providing different shades where you have the more vibrant shades, but you have the more chill shades that you can use for every day. Rose and Brunch has been on my radar for a very long time. I might crack and get that shade because I think it's just easy to plop on for everyday blush wear to add a little life to the complexion if I didn't want to go as toasty as I would look with Jubilee. So that is on the wish list if you were wondering. Okay, I sh eyeshadow. Hold on, let me let me have a sip of water, okay? I'll start with Pat McGrath's Holiday Quint from her Bijou Brilliance Holiday Collection in Bronze Ecstasy. I just checked the Sephora app. This is the only colorway available on the Sephora app. I'm not entirely sure if the other three will be available in stores. Here's the thing. I think from all the items included in the holiday collection, the quints are the MVP. There is a face and or rather cheek and eye palette that I feel it's not going to be for everyone, especially if you already have all of her divine blushes like myself. If you're not into the cheek trios, the eyeshadow quints, I think, possess the best formula, even better than what's found in the cheek and eye palette because you have these satin-like mattes accompanied by these high shine metallics that just look beautiful on the eyes and are a breeze to apply. The ease of use of the quince is remarkable and I was sent this in PR. I did not buy these quince, so disclaimer. I have been thinking about Lunar Nightshade ever since. When I dropped my Bijou Brilliance video, people were like, look, you still gotta get Lunar Nightshade, okay? Because it is bomb. And I'm like, I know, I know. Pat McGrath Labs will probably hold a holiday sale. Here's the thing, many of you had shared your horror stories with dealing with Pat McGrath lab shipping. So if you have Rouge, but I'm not entirely sure if other quints will be available. And I know, I think there was one quint that was exclusive to Pat McGrath lab. So I might just have to wait until the Pat McGrath lab sale myself. If I'm still thinking about getting the rest of them, but if you're wondering between all the products included in her holiday collection, the quints are the way to go. They're the way to go. I know they're not encased in the black lacquer with the gold brush base like you see in her Mothership Palace, but accessibility, color story, uh, uh, formula, you can go wrong with these quints. They're impeccable. I have the two from last year, the three quints from the Star Wars collection. I have one from Bijou Brilliance and impressed by bronze ecstasy if you want to see a demo using this palette i will link the card up above and the video link down below that'll be my recommendation from the holiday collection one of the quints you're wondering what i have on my eyes today i do have on natasha denona's i need a nude and i also have a video covering this palette here's the thing i understand people's critique about the limitation in terms of depth here what shines, literally, in this palette 
are the wet effect shades or formula found in I Need a Nude. It was a new formula that was featured in this palette. And yes, I think this color story, mostly for the light, medium, medium tan at the most, even though you have silhouette, this will only be a shader type of a color for deeper skin tones, and the other lighter shades will probably appear a little ashy. And the metallics here will appear a little more frosty. So depending on your skin tone, and if you have Biba, bronze, maybe you have glam, right? Glam has a little more diversity in terms of the different metallic shades that are not as shiny as the ones that are found here, but they do have that beautiful rich metallic formula that I think exhibits more of the darker browns and whatnot that you could use all over the lid and it won't appear as frosty and icy on the eyes if you are deeper complected. Nevertheless, I do appreciate a neutral cool smokyish eye i i adore what i did for this video no, w without a doubt i mean look this which leads me to also mention the makeup by mario ethereal eyes that re-released recently i don't know if this is gonna be available for the sale so if you had your eye on this palette you better be on that refresh button at midnight because this is the last time that I believe the brand will produce this palette. It was released a few years back, wait, one or two years back as limited edition. And this was the first one that came to mind when comparing something to I Need a Nude. You really can't tell. And I have a video applying both palettes and trying to identify which one is which I thought was quite difficult. I do think the formula in Natasha Denona is superior than the one found in the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes because these shades here have more of a slurry type texture to them. And I feel the Natasha Denona has more pearl and adherence to the formula. It just has a little more punch. But at the end of the day, when you apply these slurry-like textures on the lid, it's hard to tell if it's from Makeup by Mario or Natasha Denona because they have a similar finish in terms of that wet, glassy effect on the lid. So that's my input on that. For the other palettes that you are probably considering purchasing, Yucca for me is just, ugh. I can't get enough of these greens, mustards, golds, and olives. It just, when I saw this color story for the first time, I gasped. And every time I use it, it's just a lovely experience. It's fun. And also, even though this kind of gives you summertime moves, this is autumn. These are autumn shades, 100%. So I think this is a more than an appropriate choice for the season right now. I mean, I'm looking at the changing leaves in front of me right now. It looks like Yucca. It looks like the Yucca palette. And I probably have already uploaded my Xenon palette. This one is limited edition. And I understand it might be very color specific. This is monochromatic, but that's why I love it. Fully committed to the black, silvers, and the grays. All right, this is your limited edition holiday special event palette where if you want to create just like that beautiful smoky monochromatic look with high shine finishes from these metallic shades and something I probably will mention in a pinned comment under my Xenon video, but Snowbow, Snowbow, this shade right here, I underestimated its beauty. It was until I saw my lids under the light in my bathroom, where because of how it shines, it picks up that pearl reflect. And this shade is hard to see. It has blue pearls in the formula. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what makes the difference between Natasha Denona and let me, I'm gonna say it, ColourPop. People are constantly comparing ColourPop to Natasha Denona. I'm like, w why? Why are you doing this? From a color perspective, I get. The same argument I made in regards to Makeup by Mario's Ethereal Eyes and I Need a Nude, where the effect looks similar 
can you pick out which palette is which, it will probably be hard for you to do. But the ColourPop Metallics, and I haven't used ColourPop in quite some time, so I'm not entirely sure if they formulated a new uh, glassy sun wet formula from their line, let me know down below, don't have that same effect like the Natasha Denona Metallics do, and or more so the sparkling foiled metallics and the wet effect metallics. It doesn't even come close. And the mattes too are a little creamier, you know. So anyway, I understand if you can't afford Natasha Denona and ColourPop is more in your budget and if you wanted a Xenon moment, there is a ColourPop palette that has the blacks and the grays and the whatnot. But that's only nine shadows. I'm not sure of which are metallics and mattes. You got 15 in here and my goodness, the finish for some of these wet effects is insane. Insane. It does, the camera does not do it justice. It does not do it justice. You need to see this in person. Like when I did seeing my lids under the light, I was like, whoa, it was intense. It was a moment and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm happy with Xenon. I still am, okay? After my review video and looking at the footage, listen, Sign me up. Second to last item on this list, we have the Danessa Myricks Lightwork 5 Limited Edition Palette. Now, I received this complimentary from Beautylish when I filmed their full gift card event video, and you're probably wondering how does it compare to Lightwork 4 and 3. Well, I did do a members live comparing these palettes, for me, out of all the three, I do think Lightwork 5 is the easiest to use and the multi-chromes in here are softer overall than what's found in Lightwork 4. Lightwork 4, you have more of the gem tone multi-chromes that are a little more rich and they definitely have more of a potency when applied on the lid. Whereas these from Lightwork 5, much softer. For instance, Unstoppable, Unstoppable on the lids all over is so lovely. And because the texture is smooth, you can blend this through the crease and just have it as is. I forgot if it was, no, I think it might have been powerful. Powerful all over the lid, you might think it's a lot, but it actually is quite soft all over. It has like this soft plum quality about it that I was surprised by and I thought, ooh, what a great one and done shade, especially if you wanted something that you feel comfortable with. Everyone has a different <laughs> comfortability threshold when it comes to what shadows to wear during the day and whatnot. I do think this shade is quite lovely all on its own where you don't feel like you have to like blend it down or what have you. You could just blend this all over and it's just beautiful. And the other specialized finishes in here, you can rely on for the inner corner highlight or to add a little bit of flakiness. This is the whipped, I forgot the official name, but it has this flaky texture about it, that amazing shine because the particles are flatter, therefore will reflect more light. So you could apply that all over the lid where the texture of the 1.0 version is found in Lightwork 4, a little more difficult to work with. And I find it tougher to decide where I put it on my lids because it's so tight that I don't think it's ideal for textured lids. That's where the Lightwork 4 falls short for me. And compared to Lightwork 3, you have the glitter from Oreon, which I'm not crazy about, but you have the creams that I think are great if you wanted to apply those on the cheekbones because again, all these three are face and eye palettes. And the middle row, these transformer shades that have a translucent base, but a color flip to them, you can apply on any of these shades to create a different reflect. For instance, if we were to go in with this multi-chrome, which is, my goodness, insane, you have that color and you can pop on Blue Moon, one of the large pans you just saw. And on top of that, you can make that color flip happen, right? So there's a lot of mixing and matching that possible in all palettes. I would say, however, that in terms of if I were to rank this ease of use, Lightwork 5, Lightwork 3, Lightwork 4 
being the least easy to use. Even though I think it houses the best multi-chromes out of the three, if you're thinking about accessibility and whatnot, five for me first, three second. Three is pretty, three is pretty. If it wasn't because of Orion, this glitter shade, which again, it's just a pain to apply and to, well, more so to remove, right? I don't particularly like glitter like this on my lids. I much prefer, let's say, Sol. Sol is more of a metallic that mimics Pat McGrath's Gigabyte. It has this antique quality about it, which I think lovely on the lid, 100% and you have black hole. I went over this in my Beautylish video, this cream to powder black shade that you can use all over, right? If you wanted to apply it here and then take, for instance, Strawberry Moon, one of these transform shades, you could apply it over black hole and look what that does, right? Isn't that a lot of fun? So those are my considerations for the Lightwork palettes. And again, Lightwork 5 is limited edition, 125. So if you are Rouge, getting 20% off that could be quite helpful. And if you couldn't order from the Danessa site because of shipping restrictions or whatnot, even if she holds a Black Friday event sale, I'm not entirely sure, you might want to order Lightwork 5 from Sephora anyway, right? So that's just something to think about. I have been enjoying Lightwork 5. I would like to see if Danessa would do a mini version like she did Hold on. with her Lightwork 3 palette. This is the Experience palette where you have a little bit of everything that exists in Lightwork 3. Amazing for travel. And I think just a lot more practical because you saw how huge the Lightwork palettes are. You could pack it to go. It's just gonna take up a lot of space. And nice to know that, well, that middle row in Lightwork 3, they're quite soft. So I, I wouldn't be careless with how you pack that palette. I'll be careful because I fear if it gets knocked around too much, those softer powders can crack. Whereas these, you have the more tighter powders that I still would be careful with how it's packed, but less of a risk of cracking, breaking while in transit. And you have a little bit of everything. You have the Transform Shade Strawberry Moon. You have Polaris, which is one of the cream formulas. Some multi-chromes here. You have the metallics here. Great all around. And I'm happy I have this because if I wanted a strong multi-chrome moment and just wanted to go color wham bam, Lightwork 3, the little experience palette is fantastic. Maybe Danessa will create something similar for Lightwork 5. I'm not entirely sure. We're crossing fingers. And lastly, in terms of hair, electronic appliances and whatnot, the pattern dryer that is available on the Sephora app. Now, full disclaimer, Pattern Beauty did sponsor my video in presenting their hair dryer last year. Last year or this year? This year. No, last year. I can't even remember. Again, 20% off, a little more significant because of this higher price tag. And with the dryer, you get all these four attachments, which I think quite helpful if you're varying your style menu, you like to do a dry twist out. So you have the wide tooth comb attachment or you have the shower brush attachment to get through those tangles. I mostly use the diffuser to dry my poof here on the front because I do use patterns mousse to give this part of my hair a little more curling up. And what I do appreciate with the pattern dryer as opposed to the Dyson is the lowest setting on the dryer, I think, more suitable for me in everyday use. The Dyson dryer can be quite hot and I think a little too hot for what I need to dry here. Now granted, I, let me wash, wipe this finger. I did use the Dyson today to get this dry rather quickly. Keep in mind the Dyson is like what, $500? You're looking at a uh, faster heating technology than what exists in the pattern dryer, but the whole point with the pattern dryer is that it's not gonna give you that much heat because if you are coming from heat trauma or where you used too much heat in the past and your hair got destroyed from it, Pattern wanted to create a tool that you could easily control the temperature or you have that setting where it's not going to be as hot as the Dyson. And something else to consider too, probably why the Dyson dryer is so much more expensive is because the dryer attachments are magnetic. So the construction calls for a higher price tag. The stand is super fancy. 
However, a lot of people don't even bother buying Dyson appliances from Sephora because they're also available at Ulta. And if you can rack up enough points to get much better than 20% off, one of those like twirly whirly Dyson curling irons that I've seen, you probably should just wait until that happens for you. And the pattern dryer might actually be available at Ulta as well. So I'm not sure if it's worth the 20%. It could only be worth it to you again with uh, shipping conditions and whatnot. So you have to weigh out the benefits for you in figuring out from which retailer you wish to purchase from when it comes to these higher ticketed hair tool items. So those are my recommendations and I'm happy with the list because I've been using these products nonstop and it's tough since again with my skincare journey and all that I try to lessen the amount of makeup I wear per week because I do use soap uh, a lye soap to remove my makeup and soap can be drying which means I try to keep my makeup application to three to four times a week and again that lessens the opportunity for me to wear makeup and why I have held back a little bit because again I'm trying to put the the brakes on that nevertheless when the opportunity arises for when I have to apply makeup these are my go-to's and it is always a pleasure and a delight to use the products that I presented in this video and why I felt confident in recommending these to you because they they just have held it down. They held it down for all these months and I might do, well, I think for my for our members live. So if you're not a member, yes, you have to sign up and pay a little extra. What is it? Four ninety nine. If you want to tune into the live, I'll have on Saturday, which I'm planning to window shop with the close friends fam. So if you are considering the close friends membership is down below and you could just cancel your membership if you just want to do the live. <laughs> but I'm going to have that live on the membership channel indefinitely. So you have an opportunity to watch it again if you like. All that to say, let me know what your plans are for the Sephora savings event. If you are participating in it, if you are looking at other brand sales or whatever, we would love to know your plans down below. And I'll see you down in those comments. But until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, membership close friends live, or Lightwork 5 video. Take care and I will see you again soon.